this is a uh, one more problem on uh, frame and uh, we are going to solve it by direct stiffness method so the degree of uh, kinematic indeterminacy for this frame what we have is one okay so if you look at this entire frame there is a, this is the only joint which can have the rotation or a displacement okay so that gives this uh, frame the degree of kinematic indeterminacy as one and uh, we have the properties listed over here that is for uh, <coughs> different members uh, e value is uh, given as 17 to 10 raised to 6 kilometer per meter square i1 i2 i3 uh, so i1 and i3 are 0.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter raised to 4 i2 is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter raised to 4 and also a1 a3 they are 0 0.02 meter square and a2 is 0 0.03 meter square these are for these members this is member number one member number two and member number three accordingly these i and a value have been given over here if you look at the loading uh, there are the loads which have been applied over here on this first member there is a concentrated load of 40 kilo at the mid span second member carries a udl of uh, 20 kN per meter and third member if there is a force of uh, 80 kN applied towards right at the center of this length and along with all this at joint this particular joint where all three members are connected so at that joint there is a clockwise couple of 16 kilonewton meter so this is what we have in this frame and uh, one joint so here we come across uh, three degrees of freedom that is a uh, one two translation and one rotation so these degrees of freedom have been shown over here so if i take member wise okay first member will have uh, six degrees of freedom or uh, there will be three coordinate at this joint and another three at this joint for the second member again three coordinate at this joint over here and at this fixed end another three coordinates will come similarly for uh, member three at the support you have at this particular joint where support has been provided we have three coordinates two translation and one rotation and here again three coordinates that is two translation one rotation so each member it has uh, six degrees of freedom now coming to this particular uh, joint uh, where uh, we have coordinates four five six so these three coordinates are being shared by all the three members so we'll try developing the stiffness matrix for this particular frame so first member stiffness matrix in local coordinates we'll take each member separately and write member stiffness matrix in local coordinates so k1 what we have is this a by l 0 0 0 0 0 12 ei by l cube minus 12 minus 6 ei by l square 0 minus 6 ei by l square and 4 ei by l now other than the uh, these uh, three degrees of freedom the coordinates which are there at the restrained degree of freedom that is i am telling about these joint okay so if i take this first member over here so it is having coordinates 1 2 3 at this end and 4 5 6 at the other end so i am not considering these first three coordinates here i am directly eliminating these first three coordinates because there is a fixed support provided over here so it will not allow any kind of displacements to occur at that point so without considering this first three coordinates what will come at this joint over here where support is being provided so i can directly go for writing the stiffness matrix at the second joint that is by considering the coordinates 4 5 6 so there will be displacements occurring at coordinates 4 5 6 in every member that uh, displacement that will take place will be only at these coordinates 4 5 6 okay other than that at the other end there cannot be any displacement due to the support conditions what are being provided here we have the fixed supports provided over here so it, this fixed support will not allow any rotation or translation so we can avoid writing the stiffness coefficients at these particular coordinates over here so that has been followed here 
so this will reduce for uh, our matrix size it will further reduce the matrix size over here you can assemble it uh, for in the global coordinates uh, assemble that then go for eliminating that also that can also be done but here since uh, if i do that we will come across a large size of the matrix in this case so i'm directly eliminating the coordinates wherein the degrees of freedom have been arrested when i am writing the stiffness matrix for that particular member so member number one what i will consider is only the coordinates four five six if coordinate four five six are coming in this member then i'll write the stiffness matrix for that else uh, it will not contain any other values they will be all zeros similarly for member number two I, what I'll take is I'll only take the coordinates 4, 5, 6. This is 6 by 6 matrix actually. Now it has been reduced because at one end we don't come across any displacement occurring over there. So in the later stage, instead of uh, eliminating those rows and columns in the later stage, here itself the rows and columns have been eliminated. So that's why without considering any restrained degree of freedom, these matrices have been written over here. Member stiffness matrices in local coordinates have been written here so similarly for the third member k3 again for third member you have coordinates 4 5 6 at this top end or uh, at the bottom whatever coordinate numbers we come across there uh, the displacement has been arrested so we have to eliminate those rows and columns in the later stage so instead of doing that at the uh, present uh, this one when i go for writing the member stiffness matrices that that particular stage itself these coordinates have been removed from this so i'm only referring to coordinates four five six in any member okay so with respect to that the elements uh, element stiffness matrix in local coordinates have been written all these three matrices k1 k2 k3 corresponds to the element stiffness matrix in local coordinate with respect to the local coordinate they are all with respect to the local coordinate whatever we have developed here now these have to be converted to the global coordinate they should be expressed with respect to global coordinate for doing that we will be using the rotation matrix so rotation matrix we have the trigonometric ratios over there so cos sine 0 minus sine cos 0 0 0 1 so this is what it comes so instead of taking that 6 by 6 matrix i will be only considering the coordinates 4 5 and 6 only that part of that rotation matrix will be taken here we only require those coordinates 4 5 6 whatever displacements they are there uh, will be only in coordinates 4 5 6 so rotation matrix for the first member and this is for the second member note that these two members what we had here was they were parallel to the global x axis so member one and member two they are parallel to the global x-axis so theta becomes zero for these two so they will be simply a identity matrix okay so that is r1 rotation matrix for first member r2 rotation matrix for the second member they are becoming the identity matrix simply because of the fact that they are parallel to the global x direction this theta is zero over here for this uh, third one okay so here we have the rotation matrix as 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay so cos theta minus sin theta 0 0 0 sorry 1 0 0 0 0 1 okay so this is the rotation matrix for our third member then coming to the transformation part k1 if you multiply the stiffness matrix with the identity matrix you will get back the original matrix itself k1 itself so there will not be any change in this matrix similarly k2 if i multiply the uh, uh, identity matrix that is r transpose ki into r if i apply this relation over here and if i carry out the transformation so in case of k1 and k2 first and second member there will not be any change in these stiffness matrices they will remain the same even after transformation because since they were parallel to global x direction whatever coefficients we get over here they will be same in global as well as in local 
coordinates when you express them with respect to local coordinate or when you express them with respect to global coordinate they remain the same there will not be any change in them okay now coming to the third member here the transformation what it gives us they'll this will be the transformation r transpose k3 into r so on transforming this is the stiffness matrix with respect to global coordinates k3 now what we have obtained is this is with respect to the global coordinate over here so we have transformed all the three member stiffness matrices in terms of global coordinate now we need to assemble them for the entire frame so take the three coordinates what we have here four five six so at each coordinate all the three members are connected so there will be some contribution from each of the members so we'll be adding those stiffness coefficients at each coordinate from member one member two member three okay so k44 k45 k46 similarly uh, the second row and the third row can be written by adding those stiffness coefficients by each of the member for that particular coordinate now this entirely represents our global stiffness matrix over here now applying the boundary conditions or sorry not the boundary conditions are for uh, force matrices we need the fixed end reactions so considering each of the member these are the fixed end movements as well as the reactions what we obtained so pl what it gives us is the first coordinate so if i go back over here four five six this is horizontal vertical pi and rotational coordinate six this has been taken anti-clockwise in this particular problem but that should not be a problem for us whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise just the sign will change so here four that is this reaction of 40 kilonewton okay and pi is the uh, force in vertical direction so minus 80 because this has been considered as the uh, equivalent joint load for that purpose it has uh, been written as minus 80 so if you go for uh, directly substituting the fixed end reactions so this sign uh, will not be negative okay so you can just simply calculate uh, the fixed end uh, reactions movements as well as reactions consider them directly over there instead of uh, going for equivalent joint loads just take the fixed end reactions so that can be substituted in this pl matrix over here directly now p matrix we have a 16 kilonewton meter couple which is directly applied at this joint where our sixth coordinate is coming so because of that this is a clockwise couple and uh, the direction of coordinate what we had assumed was anti-clockwise so for that purpose it is substituted as minus 16. Uh, there's slight change in the notations what we used to use earlier in this case but this problem what i have taken from book in this little bit change is there so even then even though just signs have to be reversed over there we can try working out this as per our normal conventions what we used to do okay so these are the force matrices p and pl matrix pl represents the nodal forces or the forces in the coordinate due to the load supplied over the member p represents the forces which are di directly applied in the coordinate like this 16 kilometer meter couple which is directly applied in the coordinate number six okay due to the direction of the coordinate and direction of the force when we compare both of them they are in two opposite directions for that purpose minus sign has been substituted here now this is the equilibrium condition what we apply after applying equilibrium condition then the displacements what we have is here this is horizontal displacement at uh, at that particular joint vertical displacement of the joint and rotation of the joint these are the displacements okay these are the unknown displacements what we have okay 